the state of the mid 20th century, a welfare state, um, existed in the Middle East and North Africa, it's, it existed in Europe, it existed everywhere. This was a, and this was a time uh, in, during which people really came to believe whatever system they lived in, um, that there was a safety net under them, that, that somebody would take care of them. And the consequence of the neoliberal policies since the 1980s, again, across the world, has been to shrink the state and to shrink those kinds of guarantees. But what they don't really focus on as much as I think we need to is what the impact of this has been on the ordinary lives of people. So in many, many places, and I'll concentrate for the moment on the Arab world, in many places, people feel that they've been abandoned by their governments. Governments that promised free education and a job for all school leavers um, by the 1990s couldn't promise that any longer. So if your government isn't going to provide you health care, if your government isn't going to pro provide you funding for education, if your government isn't going to find, find you a job and so forth and so on, who might help you with those kinds of things? Well, increasingly people are looking to other kinds of communities and other kinds of relationships, notably religious communities. And so we have seen the development of increasing, increasingly apparent religious observance and increasingly politicized religious observance around the world over the course of the last 40 or 50 years. That's not coincidental. That is a reflection of the extent to which these kinds of communities are serving the same functions that the welfare state was once expected to serve. Identities shift from an emphasis on citizenship to an emphasis on identity of various kinds, religion being an obvious one, but other ones will also serve to provide this kind of social solidarity. So that's one thing we've seen. That's one response to the sense of having been abandoned by your, the state in which you live. The other, of course, is, so that's in a sense an exit response. I'm just leaving, I'm abandoning the state that has abandoned me. The other, of course, is protest. It's to say, no, wait, wait, this isn't fair, this isn't the deal that should obtain, my government should be doing more for me, I want a different government. And that's what we saw in the protests of the Arab Spring, was really a, this regime has to fall, we want a new regime, we want a regime that doesn't neglect us, won't abandon us, will serve our purposes, and we are those members of the citizenry who did not profit or did not, was not benefited by the neoliberal market policies. So you saw that in the Arab Spring and you saw it in huge protests which actually did bring down governments and did challenge the um, stability of these states. But actually in many ways that's not unlike the populist um, uprisings we've been seeing now for almost a decade in Occupy movements and so forth. And now we see working through um, the electoral processes in many countries, including the United States. This, the supporters of the Trump government are really people who feel that the government had abandoned them and they were gonna demand a new way of approaching politics and approaching them. They were angry, they were gonna reflect that anger in their political opinions and so forth. Um, at much as we don't know what the outcome of the Arab Spring uprisings are going to be, I don't think we know what the outcome of these populist uprisings are going to be, but in many ways they share this similar sense of having been promised something and then having been abandoned by those people who made those promises.